Outside Basketball Podcast, also known as MLB Podcast Playoff Edition. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, analyze players and teams from previous games from the previous day. Oh, ja, Ja, Ja. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, how, how you doing uh today John? i'm cool i'm cool uh, that's, that's good to hear good to hear i'm glad you're still there um thank you i'm still alive i'm still alive yep i would have never thought considering i didn't hear anything but um nonetheless you're doing a lot better than those guys right behind me because they had a terrible night last night the denver nuggets yeah. Looking at even the series for the against the Phoenix Suns, as I say, and yet, uh, yeah, uh, uh-uh. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what you allow? You got a loss. You got a loss for words, huh? You don't got nothing else to say, but no. Oh wait, that's the MVP. Well, actually, yeah, that is the MVP because actually yeah, yeah. he was one of the main guys that was killing. Yeah, to be honest, that's it. But hey, you said it. You said it so many times on on and off the record, right? If he he's great at offensively at scoring, but if he's not getting his teammates involved, they do not win. And that's what happened. His teammates couldn't get involved in offensively. You keep doing that, like, you know, cover the face. Like, you know, you should have like, covered the face on Michael Porter because he was non-existent, like, as if he never existed. You know what I mean? So, it was like, it was like, yikes. Apparently, Mike Porter was playing with an injury, mm. um, a back injury. So, yeah, that might have been why he didn't play as well. But, yeah, he, he really struggled, really struggled last night. Yeah. It was not looking good for him. Um, but you're not alone, Michael. Um, the rest of the team struggled as well. Yeah. And in that first half, it was mind blowing that they were even there in the game in that first half because they played terribly. They shot the ball terribly in that first half. But yet, they were only down. They were only down what seven, I think, or down ten. Down ten. They were down yeah. ten by half time. And they should have been down by like twenty, to be honest. Yeah. But don't worry. Yeah, it came later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, because in that second half, well, yeah, the Suns, they kind of, they kind of, yeah, with, yeah. Yeah. The one bites the dust. <laughs> and I mean, this was just, this was everybody. Yeah. Everybody. This wasn't just the Devin Booker thing. This wasn't just the Chris Paul thing. This was Mikel Bridges. This was DeAndre Ayton. This was Jay Crowder. This was Dario Sarge. This is Cameron Payne. This was Tory Craig. This was the whole team. Yeah. I mean, they did. They did. They ran through these Nuggets. Their yeah. defense throughout the whole night was spectacular. Yeah, man. This this Suns team all doing it on both ends of the floor once again. Again, they have home court advantage. They're a crowd and they're into it. They're in sync. But the thing is. They play like a team that's been together just like as long as the Nuggets. Like they've been together for almost like um um four to five years now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's hard to let up. Like, you know what I mean? Again, especially I feel like that's all because of Chris Paul and his leadership. But this whole team, they 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 click so well, they click amazingly, and you could just see that. You could see how they how they play on both ends of the floor. They play like 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 you know. They already like they already know each other's strengths, weaknesses, and what they like to commonly do, and they work off for that all the time. Yep, and a lot of that, um, well, a lot of that goes to Monty Williams because he's done a great job yeah. of coaching his team and the system that he has in play. Also, a lot of that goes to Chris Paul yeah. with his playmaking ability, which was spectacular last night, all throughout the night, fifteen assists, yeah. and his um leadership. You know, like he brings with this team. And you could just tell that he has he had had a big effect on this team. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, with their three point shooting in that second half, which they was just killing them. <laughs> it was not a good time to be a Nuggets fan, and it's unfortunate too because they got Will Barton back. Yeah, that's crazy. First game since late April, and he had a good game. Yeah. Nobody else did though, <laughs> exception of Jokic. 
But as you mentioned, uh, alluded to earlier, as or as you alluded to to what I was talking about earlier, earlier, like um in the podcast a few weeks ago, yeah. if Jokic can't get his teammates involved, they don't win. You know, that's his impact. That's his greater impact. Like you know what I mean? Uh, we know you can score the ball. But we know that for you being a better, better playmaker and getting people involved and getting people, and you, he's one of those. Play, well, he's he's the CP three of that Nuggets team. He makes his teammates better by getting them the ball and helping them out in their spots. And he 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 didn't get that done tonight, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said um less in last night's pod or yesterday's podcast, it might be more dangerous to double team him than to just ha- allow him one on one to score at will. Yeah, but they did both in this game, and it worked because their their strategies and trapping of Jokic was great all throughout the, all, through, all throughout the day. Yeah, so it's that he couldn't even pass the wall. I mean, yeah. he was struggling. Was that one play with Jay Crowder just took it from him. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah, I, I got to give credit to that to that um Suns defense and Monty Williams this defensive team that they had. I mean, it was just hustling on everything i mean it was aggressive defensively not being too aggressive and the nuggets just they panicked and they missed a lot of shots like i said terrible in that first half especially and it just continued because it could have should have been a 20 point blowout at halftime but then the second half yeah that's what happened yeah and it's crazy how you say that right because i always say it in the first place like you know when it comes to facing teams and you're what like okay the Suns are, I don't know where the Suns rank defensively during the season, but I know that they're in a huge defensive team, but I know they could play really good defense when it comes down to it, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I always say, if you take away the main source of what makes a team go, that everything else is going to collapse right along with it. It's almost like a king. The moment you kill the king or whatsoever, the big boss, everything starts to, do, um, starts to destroy itself. Like, you know? And I think that's what... You, what you sound right there with Jokic, all those trapping and schemes and stuff, you basically stop him. You limit him. You basically limit the whole team at that point. Now, but the thing is, it's 50% on Jokic, but most definitely 50% on them because they're the ones who's getting the ball to take the shots and make the shots. If they not, if they, they taking it, if they not making it, it's just like, oh, man, it, things are not going well. Things yeah. are not going well. Mm-hmm. Let's bring that percentage down. Let's say 20%. 20%? Well, on Jokic? 20%? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes more sense. 20% on Jokic, 80% on the team. Yeah, that's what that's really what happened uh, last night. And as a result, with their second half dominance and with the poor shooting um, from the Denver Nuggets, the Phoenix Suns get the home sweep and take a 2-0 series lead. Now, that was the only game of last night. Um, but there was the final award give, <laughs> given <laughs> <not to him. laughs> um, <laughs> the final NBA award was given last night and it was announced that for the third time in his career, Rudy Gobert has been announced the defensive player of the year. I want to give credit to Rudy Gobert. I mean, he's the best shot blocker in the game today. You know, he's a defensive stalwart, definitely in the post. I mean, he's he's the Jazz interior. Yeah. He is yeah. the Jazz interior. Everything defensively, he's their defensive anchor. Everything rolls from him. You better watch out when you try to come through that paint. Ja already tried it, and he got stuffed in the first round. You know, I mean, he's just – we saw it. Matter of fact, we just saw it. Against the Clippers two days ago, Marcus Morris tried to uh, tie the game up, and he Rudy Gobert just blocked it. They interfered it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's he's he's a great defensive player. Yeah, no question. That that's his main role in the league, in the league, especially for that team that he's on. You know, like you know, that defensive anchor. He's one of their best players because of that. Again, I'm kind of a little bit ticked off. But there's no robbery or anything. It was a fair game. He deserved yeah, no robbery. It. Yeah, there's no robbery or anything. But I want really love to see Ben Simmons with that award, man. Mm-hmm. And, and he's 
his impact in terms of defense for his team has been amazing this season. And it's just like, oh, yes. oh it hurts. you're right. And even though, yes, we got to give credit to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons and uh, Draymond, yeah. also Draymond, uh, the greatest defender, defense player of all time. How could we forget Draymond Green? Greatest defender who missed out on the award. <laughs> yep. Um, on this award, I swear. You're great. It's Draymond as well. I mean, he provides so much for that Warriors defense. I yeah. mean, they they don't really have a good defensive team, but when he's there, he makes everybody else defensively better. Yes. That's how good Draymond is defensively. So I want to give credit to Draymond for that. also want to give credit to Ben Simmons in that Fred Simmons is a great perimeter defender. Yeah. I mean, he's tremendous. He can get steals. He can test shots. He can stay with you when need be. I mean, he, he lacks a little bit in the post, but he can also play good post defense as well. Exactly. Same <laughs> well, with, the dude is like the height of the center anyway. <laughs> it's almost like with Draymond. Draymond is great in the post and good on the perimeter. Yeah. But the reason why Rudy Gobert got this award over them is even though Rudy Gobert can't really guard guys on the perimeter, his post defense and his paint defense is just that great. Yeah. Like he is really that great. When you come into that paint, he's going to meet you. Yeah. I I, mean, I can't I can't go against that. I really can't go against that. And that, yeah, so that's why I say that. And it's also I want to give credit to um Bam as well. Cause I I feel like he should have got more consideration because he's a great post defender as well and a um, good to okay perimeter defender. Not against um, Brooke. Regular season award. Hey, man, I'm just saying. Regular season award. Um, we credit to Miles Turner as well. He's a tremendous shot blocker. I initially had him un until he got hurt and didn't play. Because I really feel like he's very underrated defensively. He should get a lot more praise, but um, well, he in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting really praise in Indiana, unfortunately. Exactly. Unless you're Reggie Miller. <laughs> um, yep. Um, but congratulations to Rudy Gobert, third time Defensive Player of the Year. And well, speaking of Indiana, since you just mentioned, did you hear that their head coach, Nick, Nate, Nate, Nick, Nate? Nate I don't know how to say his last name. Yorkin, I think. I, I, I don't even know how to say his last name either. To be but, honest. yes, Coach Nate, I'm doing what you did, again, uh, for uh, Coach for the Indiana Pacers. Even he's only been there for one year, but now he's out of there for one year. As they have fired him, um, do you agree with this decision? Well, I didn't know much about the coach, and he, 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 <laughs> and Indiana kind of took a dip the moment um, the other Nate. Nate McMillan, yeah. Nate McMillan left, so I can understand. I'm not hating on the coach. I don't know much about him, but probably looking to a transition because, again, this Indiana team is really good. They're keeping up with the with how today's league is being able to play in multiple versatile ways in terms of fast pace. Cause again, it shocked the hell out of me when they see they one of the one of the best fast paced teams in the league. I said Indiana. I said they always play slow to me, but hey, I could be wrong, you know. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, and again, they have some great talent up there. You got you talk about um Sabonis, you talk about Levert, you talk about um Brogdon, you talk about Warren. I they got a lot. No, of he's pieces. hurt. <laughs> yeah, he's hurt right now, but they got a lot of pieces, man. They got a lot. Oh, Turner, who's also hurt. So, like, you know, they got a lot of pieces, man. They just need a coach, a really good a playoff head coach to try to bring them over. Yeah, well, I mean, they just had Nate McQuillan, and he was a playoff head coach, and they've been to the playoffs. But I feel like they need they, – they wanted to fire him and to take a next step, and they got um, the other Nate, and he really didn't – it went down. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, with, with all that talent, I mean, yeah, got to be some form of success – not just playing games. Exactly. I feel like Indiana was very inconsistent this year. Yeah. We talked about it a lot during the regular season. 
feel very inconsistent, and he had too much talent on that team to be that inconsistent. Exactly. Also, another play didn't mention T.J. McConnell. Oh, yeah, T.J., yeah, T.J. So, I mean, you have all that talent. I mean, you got to do something with it. And after just having a playoff head coach, and then you have to get another head coach, and you dip, and you're not rebuilding, I I understand why they would, you know, um, make that decision. Well, now this is perfect because we took – I remember you remember when you talked to – to me about Terry, Terry, Terry about Scott's, Terry, Terry Scott's. Yep. Now, this is a perfect team for him. A playoff type of bound team. He could, he could take them to the playoffs. Most definitely. Now he should join Indiana if they ever give him a call, which I, I most definitely believe they will give him a call if the, if the, if the, if the door is open. I, I, I actually a hundred percent agree. Yeah. I think that's a perfect place for Terry Scott's. Um, but hey, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, in Indiana, uh, keep posted on future head coach. Another spot opened for head coaches to join. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think that is all news. Yes, that, that's all the news I yep. got. That is all news. So let's get into the predictions for tonight's set of playoff matchups. For starting off with game. Three, ESPN 7:30. The Brooklyn Nets. No Harden once again going to Milwaukee to battle the Milwaukee Bucks. Been struggling in the past two games against this Nets team. But who you have? I I, I got the Bucks. I got the Bucks. Um, they're back on their home floor. You know, Yan- <laughs> You know, Giannis is gonna play out of his mind, and um. Well, I would hope the, so. the, 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 yeah, the team wanted to bounce back, man. The way that they lost was in embarrassing fashion. And we know this Bucks team does not go out like that, even though they gave it to Miami like that. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I need Giannis to take control. Yeah. Ain't nobody on that on the Nets can guard him. I need yeah. him to take that control. I need Mike Booz to say, hey, just give him, the, give him the ball in the post. Set set up plays for him. Screens, roll to the baskets, cut. Um backdoor cuts like lobs anything just give, just give him the ball yeah I, he needs to dominate and he needs to take control and if he does take control the team around him would would um rival him in terms of that yeah because you know once the star player gets up there the team follows and also it helps because if he starts dominating, the Nets are going to have double team. You got shooters all around you. Middleton, Holiday, Forbes, they got to knock it down. Yeah. Well, at least they, that, they should knock it down because they haven't been knocking down the last two games. But uh, definitely not a game two. But uh, next up, ESPN, 10 o'clock, game two. Coming off of their three-point loss, in Utah. The Clippers look to bounce back in game two against this Jazz team who had that dominating performance by, of course, Donovan Mitchell to save the day in that second half, Gordon. But who do you have? Uh, I'm going to say I see the Clippers taking this one on the stipulation that I feel like Paul George will have a game, a better game than what he did last I, um, I really hope so. I really hope so. I really, really feel like, yeah, I really feel like Paul George is the X factor into winning this game because we know Kawhi going to be great. Kawhi just has this, has this robot switch that he could just turn it on and he could just go crazy and start scoring at will whenever he want. It's just that PG's my main concern because just like, you know, just like what you said, he settles too much. He settles too much. And like, you know, he he's not, again, I told you, the one that went against prime peak Braun at his athleticism, that's the PG that we need to see. The one that won at Prime Braun when he was at his peak athleticism, man. He probably could can't duplicate or replicate, but he could get if he could just get a little bit close to it, just a little bit close to it. That's the PG I would love to see. I I, I feel you. I feel you 100 uh, percent Like PG really needs to play well. And we're going back and forth in terms of this game too. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to agree with you. I have the Clippers um, bouncing back in this game. Yeah. But all right, uh, I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? 
Um, man, <laughs> congratulations to the Suns, man. They've been, they, they, they've been just, they just been a roll. They, they just really been on a roll. I, like, I really like watching this team. I really like watching this team. They, they play with that chip on their shoulder as if they're, the, as if they're, the, as if they're the most doubted. Well, mm. they're not underdogs anymore. They used to be, but like you know, the way that they're playing is amazing and all because of one man, all one man. In terms of changing their their the the, the way that they flow, and that is Chris Paul. Mm, yeah, Chris Paul deserves a lot of credit. Um, he's done he's done a tremendous job yeah. being on the Suns roster. So Monty Williams as well. Yes, yes. head coach. You know, it starts with with him. Doesn't doesn't it doesn't come together? Yeah. You don't have a great head coach leading it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but um. That being said, thank you guys for watching today's podcast. Make sure to watch tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, support the channel, give us feedback, all that good stuff. And also follow IG and our TikTok down in the description below. Yes, yes, yes. And once again, I'm Evan. I'm Ja. This is my basketball podcast. Playoff edition. Playoff edition.